Hey, thanks for joining us here on iCatholic.com or GodTube or YouTube, wherever you're watching this. My guest, I can't believe it, Rocco Palma whispers in the loggia. Thanks, Rocco, for joining us. Thank you, Father Bob. It's great this to is be here. Fantastic. Oh, great to meet you in kind. person. You're kind of like a groundhog. Yeah, I, I come can. out once a year. Yeah. Once a year, one TV appearance a year, and I get asked to do a lot of TV, but I leave it to the pros. It's better that way. And you know, my pro moment is when I'm kind of just hanging back and unshaven and and taking it easy and Cup of coffee. writing away. That's the thing. You know, we all we all. God has called us each to even one arm of the media. We all have you, your vocations, TV, and, and mine is is the net. And I'm I'm weighing over my head as it is, I guess. Well, you know, the the vocation I think that both of us share is just living out our baptismal call. And uh, I mean, you love the church. And I think if yeah. I'm if I'm not mistaken, that's your inspiration oh, for course. whispers in the loggia. Well, it's for me. It's I hope to live my baptismal call. I try to live my baptismal call. It isn't it isn't easy. Uh, and that's the thing. And, if, and I see a lot of people who, um, who have who have shown me, and that's why I owe it to the people who have shown me that it is it is possible, it's doable. Um, but it isn't easy. But it's beautiful that it isn't easy. It requires work. It requires, you know, part of it is, and we all will at some point, you know, slip, have a fall, and and you know, and the question is, and, and just trying to get back up again. And those are the moments that are really the great moments of grace. It may not seem like it, but um, just just getting back up again, be it you know either a setback in life or or sin or struggle with something, whatever it is, we all we all there are as many of those as there are each of us. We all have one, and so so. But just the people who showed me that it's it's possible to do, and and that, but that you always have to get up. And just keep going, and, sure. and so yeah, so so I hope to, I try to, and, and I hope I'm getting better with time. I don't know. Yeah, well, and, you and, and me both. I rely on the prayers. I mean, that's the most important thing. That's what gets yeah. me through. Yeah, and, and the church, the sacraments, the you know, the community, uh, the international yeah. community of and, the church, and I mean, the community has saved. Huge. And the community angle has saved me. I mean, we all. It's it's like a team, and it's it's tougher to do something you know on your own and feeling that nobody's got your back. And really, the the experience of of writing. Whispers is really, or at least the people are reading it and have been so good and so kind. Is one showed me so, so many more examples, showed me how much further I have to go along the way, as it were. But um, it, it saved me, literally, in, in terms of um, just uh, give, surrounding me with a lot of love, a lot of hope, a lot of goodness, a lot of energy. It's tough um, these days, especially in this part of the country, because you know so, so many parishes are closing, have closed, and. You know, communities, you know, we're trying to build communities, free strength in communities. You go elsewhere in the country and you go into the south and into the west and you see something which is just, which we need to, which has begun here. We need to bring it ever more, that kind of vibrance, that mm. kind of just genuine energy. And intriguingly enough, it's in the places where the church is a d- distinctive minority. I was talking to a priest and, you know, like Baptist dominant North Texas a couple weeks ago. Right. And there's... Very few, very few Catholics there. I think the you know the churches are maybe like the largest church can see like five hundred people or something like that, and they're filled every week. And people are just either you know converting. A friend of mine's got a parish um, down south. Every year for RCA, he's bringing in thirty, fifty people. The parish has almost tripled in size in the last fifteen years. And there's so there's this we can learn from that. Before they learned from us, and now we can learn from them. That's what communion is all about. Yeah, and it's so important to tell the message. You know that. 2,000 years ago, we all know Jesus sent the mm-hmm. apostles out yeah. and to preach the gospel, the good news of the kingdom of heaven, and you know the, the communication, that charge to communicate the exactly. gospel has been with us and We're is all with in the us communications today. business. Yeah, you're We're, in it, I'm in it. We're all We're in it. We're all in it because it all be, the word was made flesh. Well, the word is we are all here to tell a story, to become. I was reading a beautiful letter from the weekend from the Patriarch of Jerusalem who's retiring next week, but he said that the responsibility of the Christian is to be a living gospel. Well said. What more could you ask for? You know, uh, I don't know how how well we're doing as a church together mm-hmm. in communication. I think it, it's a constant struggle. Uh, from your perspective yeah. as the author of Whispers in the Loggia, uh, how are we doing in communicating the message in this very challenging moment, especially as American Catholics? Well, I think it's, it's better than it was, but I think we still got a lot of work to do. And, and I'm talking not so much, I mean, really, the most beautiful communications work is done by so many of our priests, our religious, our, our good people who live it every day, who are that living gospel every day. That really is, that's the, the greatest strength of communication the church will ever have. And so, but institutionally, I think uh, 
we, we need to, because that's what I think can garner headlines or is able to kind of garner attention and exposure more. And I worry. I worry because, and this was one of the things that kind of motivated whispers in the back of my mind, I did not feel as if the church was speaking to me. The church is either, was, was either speaking over my head mm. or almost in some ways I felt in my, in my own diocese insulting my intelligence. I'm not the smartest, you know, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I know what I'm talking about when it comes to the church. And I, you know, and so, and that respect, I think, you know, that our people be respected, that the public square be respected is the most important thing. I once got a note from a director of communications in another diocese, and the first line wasn't, you know, and this was the first first time I had ever heard from this person. The first line wasn't, um, you know, it's I am, or, you know, introducing himself or whatever. The first line was, we need to talk. I'm like, Okay, this is exactly what I want to hear from someone whose who's job is to speak for the church. We need to talk. It's not, you know, we to be pro-life people, we need to respect the human dignity of the audience we're talking to. Of the, you know, it's it's not just a question of one issue or another issue. It, it, it must always be um, just carried out, carried through. But the thing I worry about the most is that a lot of folks in the church, and some, and it's human nature. We all fall prey to it. it sometimes seem more comfortable. Attacking things and blaming everything else, as opposed to uh, talking about who we are and what we do. We're not. If, if we spend our time or, or or show our greatest enthusiasm going after other things, then there's no wonder those stats that came out last week saying that the church in this country has bled 10% of the entire American population has left. 27 million people have left this church.